Welcome to Budget MTG decks. All the cards you see in our videos are a dollar or less, with exception of the commander cards. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when a new video comes out. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Budget MTG Decks. I'm David, and today we're going to be looking at another fun and effective commander you can build without breaking the bank. And today we have a sweet deck that punishes our opponents for drawing cards. And our commander is going to be Nekuzar the Mind Razor for two, a blue, a black, and a red. So for five mana, we get a 2 4 legendary zombie wizard. And it states that at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. So not just us, but everybody's going to be drawing a card at the beginning of their uh, upkeep an additional card. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they're going to take one damage from Nekuzar. So that is going to be super sweet. What is going to be the strategy of this deck? We're going to be playing cards that punish our opponents for drawing cards. They're going to be removing st threats strategically. And then we're going to be playing group draw spells to deal as much damage to as many people as possible. The cost of this deck is also quite reasonable. The commander comes in at just under five bucks and the rest of the deck at just a little over $30. So together, this entire deck comes into just below $40. Now let's have a look at the deck list, a group by strategy. The synergy cards are designed to work well with Nekuzar's two abilities, which is which is to draw extra cards and to deal damage to our opponents whenever they draw a card. So we divided the categories into draw and damage. To start off with the draw category, Fate Unraveler, Spiteful Visions, and Obniclus the Hate Twisted. Fate Unraveler is a creature and it states that whenever an opponent draws a card, uh, this card is going to deal one damage to that player. So that's nice, kind of the same as Nekuzar. Whenever people are drawing cards, they're taking damage. Spiteful Visions, very similar to our commander in the sense that at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card, just like Nekuzar says. And whenever a player draws a card, Spiteful Vision deals one damage to that player. Slightly different from Nekuzar. Nekuzar only damages our opponents. This card also damages us, but of course, we're going to be dealing much more damage to our opponents, so that doesn't matter. And Obnix is the Hate Twisted, is a Planeswalker, five loyalty, and it states that whenever an opponent draws a card, they're going to take one damage from Obnixless. And it has an additional uh, benefit in that two times it's going to be able to destroy Tiger Creature and its controller draws two cards, which is very nice. So this is basically these three cards are all uh, the same as Nekuzar in the sense that people are drawing extra cards, they're taking extra damage. Then we have Nin, the Pain Artist, and Notion Thief. Uh, Nin may, uh, allows us to pay mana, tap it, and then deal damage to a creature, and then its opponent's creature is going to deal X damage. So this we can use either two ways. Uh, we can either use it to destroy an opponent's creature and um, make sure that they draw tons of cards and also take tons of damage because of that, or we can, you know, be a little bit more conservative with it, deal damage to maybe three damage to uh, Nekuzar, for example. Nekuzar won't die, and then we draw three cards if we need to fill our hand a little bit more. Uh, Notion Thief is nice in the sense that as a surprise, if we don't want to go the route that everybody's drawing tons of cards, with Notion Thief, we can make sure that whenever other people have to draw extra cards, we're going to be drawing those extra cards. So we're going to be have, we could have tons and tons of cards in hand, which allows us, of course, to have better control over the battlefield. Then we have Psychosis Crawler and Niv Mizzet the Fire Mind. Both of these cards uh, allow us to do something whenever we draw a card. Psychosis Crawler states that whenever we draw a card, we're going to be dealing one point of damage to each opponent, or they're going to lose one life. And Niv Mizzet states that whenever we draw a card, we're going to deal one damage to target creature or player. So the more that we draw in this case, the more damage we're dealing. And of course, Niv Mizzet also has card draw built into it. Then we have Sangom Sangromancer, Archfiend of Ifnir, and Price of Knowledge. These also synergize well with all the draw. Why? Because Sangromancer states whenever an opponent discards a card, you gain three life. We're going to be drawing so many cards, and our opponent's going to be drawing so many cards. They're going to be discarding cards, which means that we're going to be gaining life for that. And what's also really nice is that if somebody has a board wipe, we're going to be gaining three life for each creature that dies that our opponents control. And so if we're playing against token players, perhaps we're going to gain so much life is going to put us out of the reach of uh, us dying to these kind of pain effects. Anyway, Archfiend of Nif uh, Ifnir, we're going to be drawing lots of cards as well. Usually we don't have a way to keep more than seven cards in hand. So we're going to be discarding cards and then we're going to be putting minus one, minus one counters on each creature our opponents control. And Price of Knowledge, the only card that allows us and everybody else actually to have a, a no maximum hand size. But it does state that beginning of your upkeep, of each opponent's upkeep, if they have, um, they're going to take damage equal to the number of cards in their hand. So that is going to get out of control real fast. This is a nice finisher, especially with all the group draw cards that we have. 
Then we move on to the cards that synergize well with Nekuzar dealing that damage every turn uh, when our opponents are drawing extra cards or just any, any card whatsoever for that matter. Curiosity, Sigil of Sleep, and Phyrexis. Curiosity states that whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. This thing gets out of control way too fast. We're going to be drawing so many cards. We're going to be filled with gas absolutely the whole time if this is enchanted on our commander. Sigil of Sleep states whenever enchanted creature deals damage to a player, return target creature that player controls his owner's hand. This is absolute brutal removal, returning multiple creatures to our opponent's hands per turn. And the last one, Phyrexis, enchanted creature has infect. Well, if the amount of damage we were doing is not enough. Poison counters are gonna, definitely going to end the game really fast because remember, if an opponent has 10 poison counters, they lose the game. Then we have Luxon on Warhammer, Helm of the Gas Lord, and Elder Mastery. It's a little bit more fun cards. Luxon on Warhammer, uh, yes, does uh, boost the power of uh, the enchanted creature and gives trample, but mostly we just pop it on to Nekuzar to make sure we get the lifelink, so we're gaining tons and tons of life as the table goes round. And Helm of the Gas Lord states that as long as the creature is blue, it's going to get plus one, plus one. As long as it's black, it gets plus one, plus one. And also when it's blue, whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. And whenever, if this creature is black, we're going to be um, having them discard a card. So as Nekuzar is both, this thing is getting, Nekuzar is going to get plus two, plus two. And whenever an opponent draws a card, we're going to deal one damage to them. And we're going to draw a card and we're going to have them discard a card. So that is insane value and the last one of these synergy cards is elder mastery a whopping an aura that's a whopping six mana so it better do a lot rest assured it does it gives nekuzar in this case is going to give us plus three plus three flying sure fine you know you can do some damage it doesn't really matter whenever enchanted creature deals damage to a player that player discards two cards so essentially worst case scenario they're going to be discarding four cards every turn it's impossible to keep gas in hand with something like this on the battlefield that is it for the synergy cards. Let's have a look at the protection cards. We divided the protection cards into those that protect us against target removal, counter spells, and those that protect us against damage, because we want to be dealing more damage than we're taking. We're going to start with Nurok Stealth Suit, Whisper Silk Cloak, and Elgod Shield Maid. Uh, Nurok spell, Stealth Suit is very nice because it gives our commander's going to give it a uh, shroud, which means we won't be able to target it, but other people can't either. And normally, of course, the equip cost is one, that's very nice, but this has a special ability. It has an attach ability for two blue, which means we can uh, we can equip it instant speed, which is very nice. So if we have um, Nekuzar equipped with Nurok Stealth Suit, we do keep two blue open, and somebody wants to destroy one of our other creatures, we can pop pay two and then attach it instant speed onto the other creature giving it shroud. Uh, Whisper Silk Cloak also gives our commander shroud and unblockable. The unblockable is not really that relevant, but the shroud is very nice. And Elgod Shield Maid, we're going to soul bond it with our commander when it enters the battlefield and then both are going to have hexproof, so keep it protected against targeted removal. The counter spells also help against board wipes or targeted removal for that matter or as if somebody trying to counter Nekuzar when we're casting it. Counter Squall, Arcane Denial and Dream Fracture. What's nice about Counter Squall, Squall is that it also uh, deals two more damage to whoever casts a spell. Arcane Denial is nice that it also uh, it produces card draw for our opponent, which means they're going to be taking more damage. And Dream Fracture also produces card draw for our opponent and ourselves, which means that it's also going to be doing extra damage. And then we have Fog Bank and Guard Gomazoa, which are the damage protection cards. These, pop, these suckers, we just pop them on the battlefield. They've got Defender flying, we're not attacking with it, we don't need to. Uh, Nekuzar is dealing all our damage long range. And we just make sure that we've got some big fat creatures that are coming at us. As long as they don't have Trample, we're going to be able to block them for days. Especially nice against those Voltron strategies, make sure that we don't take too much damage early on in the game. That is it for the protection cards, let's have a look at the control spells. We divided the control spells into two categories, those that allow us to target stuff to get rid of it and the board wipes which is heavy, hit everything at the same time. We're going to start with Demir Charm, Is it Charm and Rakdos Charm. The charms are extremely flexible, very cheap, allow us to hit multiple different things. You know, we can exile graveyards, we can deal damage, we can uh, counter a sorcery, we can do tons and tons of stuff. So these are in here for extra versatility. Kind of the same as Terminate, Krosis Charm and Grixis Charm. The Terminate is not very flexible, just allows us to destroy target creature uh, for two mana. But the Krosis Charm and the Grixis Charm gives us so much flexibility in whether we want to remove something or uh, uh, return, bound something, or kill something that's indestructible with the minus four, minus four, for example. Very, very versatile. 
Then we move on to the board wipes. We've got Starstorm, Sulphurous Blast, and Caldera Hellion. Why do we choose these for the board wipe? Uh, Nekuzar has four toughness moves with Starstorm if we pay uh, four mana total, or sorry, if we pay five mana total, we can deal three damage to each creature. So Nekuzar lives. Sulphurous Blast, we can play it in our main phase to deal three damage to each creature and each player, and Caldera Hellion, when it enters the battlefield, we can deal three damage to each creature. So in all these cases, Nekuzar would still be there, but we can get rid of maybe people being very aggressive with tokens. And uh, then we have Plague Splitter, Plague Spitter for two, and a black, one of my favorite cards, it says at the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to each creature and each player, and when it's put into the graveyard, it's gonna do, again, one damage to each creature and each player. So it's consistently, at the beginning of upkeep, deals one damage to each creature and each player. So it's not just one time, every single turn, it really uh, puts a, um, a damper on anybody who's playing one toughness creatures who wants to maybe repeatedly play them or bounce them, gets them back and wants to play them. But as long as Plague Spitter's on the battlefield, it's gonna be uh, destroying those creatures, which is very nice. And then we come to the last of the board wipes, and that's Whelming Wave and Incite Rebellion. Whelming Wave is just a very generic board wipe, which hits everything except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Well, we don't have any of those, but it just hits those anyway. I mean, it hits everything except for those. And Incite Rebellion, for each player, this card is going to deal damage to that player, and each creature that player controls equal to the number of creatures they control. This is very nice. We're going to have maybe a few creatures, maybe three. Uh, so it's going to do three damage to all our creatures. We're definitely not going to lose the Nekuzar, but our opponents are going to have all their creatures uh, destroyed, especially if they're playing multiple creatures. That is it for the card uh, for the board wipes. Let's have a look at the card advantage cards. We divided the card advantage spells into three categories: the single use, the repeatable ones, and the wheel cards. To start with a single use card, we got Mind Glow for single blue, it's a sorcery. We can pop as much extra mana into it as we want and everybody else can join in and put as much mana into it as they want as well. And then each player is gonna draw X cards, where X is the total amount of mana paid total. So that's a great group draw spell. Remember that whenever our opponents are drawing cards, they're also taking damage. That's the reason why we're making sure that everybody's drawing tons of cards. Then we move on to Prosperity, Fascination, and Skyscribing. Essentially works the same way. We're gonna be making sure that everybody draws X cards. With Skyscribing, it has the additional ability as well to forecast it for three, which means we just reveal it from our hand, pay the mana, we don't have to cast it, and then each player draws just a single card. So we can kind of use that as repeatable card draws, so it's not really, uh, doesn't have to be single use. Then we have Dakra Mystic and Lore Broker. Dakra Mystic, we can pay one blue, tap it, and then everybody reveals the top card of their library and we can choose whether it goes to the graveyard or they draw it. So that's an additional draw right there. And Lore Broker, we can tap it to make every opponent draw a card and discard a card. So it allows everybody to loot. Then we have Temple Bell and Otherworld Atlas. Temple Bell, we just tap it and everybody draws a card. And with Otherworld Atlas, we do first need to tap it one time to put charge counter on it. And then after that, every time we tap it, we can have each player draw a card for each charge counter on Otherworld Atlas. So yes, we can, of course, uh, maybe tap it a few times before to make put more charge counters on there. And then later on, tap it to make everybody draw many more cards. Then we have Fevered Visions, Dictate of Crufix, and Command as Awakening. Fevered Visions states that at the beginning of each player's end step, they're going to draw a card. So usually it's at the beginning of your upkeep, they're going to draw an extra card. But now at the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card. And if they have four or more cards in hand, they're going to take two damage. So this is nice, giving them a little bit of extra damage next to, Kruf uh, next to uh, Nekuzar. Dictate of Crufix has Flash, and at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Uh, yeah, remember to play this at the end of your opponent's last turn before it's your turn to make sure that you're the first person to get value out of this. And Commander's Awakening costs four mana, and it also states that at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. But uh, if you have the City's Blessing, which means you have 10 or more permanents, then only you will be drawing a card. But we don't really mind if everybody draws a card, because that's that's nice, right? We're sharing the love right there. Then we move on to the wheel cards. Wheels are great because they allow us to discard our hand and then draw tons of cards. And of course, when everybody's drawing tons of cards, they're taking tons of damage. Uh, diminishing Returns, Game Plan, and Dragon Mage. With Diminishing Return, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and then exiles the top card of their library and then draws up to seven cards. Then game plan for six mana. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards, so essentially the same. But uh, with diminishing returns, it is optional to draw the cards, and with game plan, it's not optional. 
And then we have Dragon Mage, and then when this creature deals combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. So you can already imagine that every turn, Dragon Mage attacking, not only dealing the five damage in the air, but also going to be doing at least seven damage with Nekusar on the battlefield to everybody. Then we have Whispering Madness and Incendiary Command and Korvat's Fury. Whispering Madness says that each player discards their hand and then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards of the player discarded this way, which means that we don't look at how many cards you got, but look at whoever got the most cards that they discarded, and then we're going to draw that many. This is going to be brutal when somebody's got a lot of cards in hands. Maybe they got a way to make sure they don't have to discard. They can have unlimited hand size, and then everybody's going to be drawing that many cards, taking that much damage. And of course, the beauty of it is we can cipher this onto a creature, and then whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, we're going to basically cast this again. So don't put this on Nekuzar, because Nekuzar is dealing damage to players, but it's not dealing combat damage. So put it on some other creature that you can actually uh, swing in with and hit your opponents with. Incendiary Command's got multiple different options, but the one we got in here, the reason why we're playing is each player discards all cards in their hand and then draws that many cards. And Corvus Fury, very similar again. Uh, we're going to choose friend or foe, and then our friend is going to discard all cards from their hand, then draw that many cards plus one. So that's actually what we want to do even to our opponents. But we can also say that they're a foe, in which case they're going to take damage equal to the number of cards in hand. Then that is it for the card advantage cards. Let's have a look at the ramp spells. To start off the ramp cards, we've got Wayfarer's Bauble, Armillary Sphere, and Nightscape Familiar. Wayfarer's Bauble and Armillary Sphere allow us to search for basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tapped. And Nightscape Familiar is more of a discounter, which reduces the cost of blue and red spells with one generic mana. So that's nice to be able to cast uh, Nexar a little bit earlier. Mind Stone and Prismatic Lens come in for two mana and tap for a colorless. And Talisman of Creativity and Star Compass also only cost two and uh, give us mana, give us colored mana, although a Talisman of Creativity does deal damage to us and Star Compass comes in tapped. Mana Geode and Darksteel Ingot cost a little bit more. They cost three mana to play. But uh, Mana Geode also allows us to scry one way into the battlefield, and Darksteel Ingot is indestructible. And of course, these two give us mana of any color. That is it for the ramp. Let's have a look at the lands. We divide the lands into seven islands, seven swamps, six mountains, and 17 non basic lands. We're going to start off with Crumbling Necropolis and Crypt of the Eternals. What's great is that these can give us mana of any color that we want in this deck pretty much so the blue the black and the red which is what we're going to be playing then we have dismal backwater swift water cliffs and blood filled caves come in tapped gain us a life but also give us an option of two different colors demir aquadot is it boiler works and rakdos carnarium come in tap we do have to bounce a land back to our hand but these cards tap for two mana of two different combination colors then we have Gateway Plaza, Rupture Spire, and Transguild Promenade come in tapped. We do have to pay one mana, otherwise we're going to sacrifice it, but they do tap for one mana of any color. Vivid Creek, Vivid Marsh, and Vivid Crag come in tapped, give us only one type of color, but they do come in with charge counters, so that means two times in the game we can actually produce mana of any color we want. Then we have Grixis Panorama, Terramorphic Expanse, and Evolving Wilds. These can be sacrificed to search for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. With Grixis Panorama though, we do have to pay a mana in order to sacrifice it, and we can only look for an island, a swamp, or a mountain, but those are the cards that are the only ones that we got in there as basic lands. Anyway, that is it for the lands. Let's have a look at two examples starting hands. So in the first example, we're going to start off early with a discounter with Nightscape Familiar, making sure our spells are a little bit cheaper. Terminate to have a little bit of control to kill something that might be a threat early on in the game. Fevered Visions allows everybody to be drawing extra cards. It means it's going to fill up our hand really fast and also is going to be dealing extra damage to our opponents. And Helm of the Gas Lord, we're going to put that on Nekuzar and basically give us a giant advantage in both card draw and a giant disadvantage to our opponents in all the cards they're going to be discarding. In the, exam the second example that we've got, we'll start off with a little bit of early ramp with Star Compass. Then we're going to go with Temple Bell, make sure that we'll be drawing extra cards, get some extra fuel in there for everybody as well. Spiteful Vision is going to be giving us even more card draw to everybody and also dealing extra damage. And then when we put on Nekuzar, we make sure that Sigil of Sleep is on there nice and snug to make sure that we're going to be bouncing all our opponent's creatures pretty much every time they're drawing, uh, they're going to be drawing tons of spells. Anyway, that is it for two example starting hands. Let's have a look at some non-budget upgrades. 
So you've got some extra bucks burning a hole in your pocket and you want to upgrade this Nekuzar deck. Uh, rest assured, these are some nice strict upgrades, especially in the uh, wheels category. The wheels have gotten very expensive lately, so you might want to be looking at some extra good wheel cards. Some extra cards that allow us to uh, maybe have um, no maximum hand size or some just extra card draw in the form of, for example, Kami of the Crescent Moon or Howling Mine. These are all great cards to, uh, to upgrade your deck with. That is it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm David, and this was Budget MTG Dex. Find all the cards discussed in this video in the description below. Also, show you're a fan of the channel by rocking this awesome Budget MTG Dex merchandise. This show was made possible by the support of our loyal patrons. Head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex and donate as little as a dollar per month.